Morning again folks, this is Toby with wormcastings.net. I just wanted to bring a quick garden update to you folks. Here's our giant pumpkin, still yet to be named. I'm out here a little uh, later this morning, so might get a little bit of uh, sunlight coming up over the, over the fence there. But that's alright, you guys get the idea. Anyways, let's move on over to the eggplants. These eggplants are doing uh, great. They are slow growers. But as you can see, this one popped a second shoot right out of the ground. So what happens when you farm with worm castings. The plants are really happy. Um, here's some Georgia collards popping up. Pretty neat. Had a um, bit of a slow germination rate on the onions on this side. And the reason for that is they got a little bit of exposed to the weather, the starts. So, whereas the other ones out had a like a hundred percent germination rate, they were kept in a dark, cool place. So, hey, there were extra onions, so we popped them in the ground. And if they don't pop up, we'll just replace them. No big deal. Our tomatillo is taking off. Look at this guy. It's got nice little flowers on it somewhere in there so and if you look across the way our first ever corn patch is going nicely never planted corn before comes up just like grass it looks like grass so you got to be careful along the edges that when you're pulling the grass you don't pull out your corn so, moving along here, cantaloupe's doing nicely. And, first time ever acorn squash. These are great on the holidays. You can just bake them with some cinnamon and all that. Some brown sugar, butter. It's a lot of fun. Okay, now our watermelons are doing great. We grow them right in the grass down here in Florida. They don't seem to mind. I, I dug out like three and four foot holes, filled them up with a bunch of organic matter, just plant them right in the holes, simple as that. There's one uh, cantaloupe right there. And the ones in the back are the sugar baby. I don't know how well you can see them from here, but not going to do the whole entire garden. Let me just quickly move over here. These are the okras. You can see we had one that didn't pop up. No big deal. Right there. But look what did pop up really fast. I want you guys to get started on these perennial tree collards. They are phenomenal. Okay, when this, this thing, you pop it right in the ground, it grows right up out of the ground, it'll put side shoots out, you cut them out, put another one right here. Before you know it, you got a whole row of these things. You could juice these things and live on them. They grow about sometimes 15 foot tall, they're a perennial. Good idea to keep them in some shade. So they'll, uh, and in the winter time, these things are incredibly sweet. They have more uh, nutrition in them, more calcium than cow's milk, and it's about the most nutritious thing you can you can eat. The quickest way to get the vitamins out of this thing is to just juice it raw. You can use them in salads, sandwiches, you can cut them up, cook them, but remember when we cook our vegetables we're also killing a lot of the nutrients. So. Right next door we have some uh, more cantaloupe. By the way, you see that spot right there? I do believe that's from sprinkling diatomaceous earth directly on the leaves to get rid of the, uh, the insects around here. We have a ton of insects in Florida. If you can confirm that this happens, because I'm not sure if it's a diatomaceous earth. I did sprinkle some on the leaves. I read you can do it, but hey guys, let me know. You know, I'm learning new things every day here. I just want to grow some uh, some food for my family, just like you guys. So um, 
you know that's what that's what we're doing over here so all these tomatoes came from sucker plants and um, you know just leftovers from the garden across the street and they're working great you know garden does seem like it needs to be watered I don't usually do that in the morning but I, I might give some of these plants some water and here's those other onions I was telling you about we harvest the greens off them regularly in the morning time they're awesome when you um, when you're making your eggs you know make an omelet chop them up just like scallions you know green pepper sweet green pepper bell pepper oh wow I didn't even see this look at this guy holy cow that's new wow this is called a cow horn pepper. It was supposed to be a poblano. When I picked up a bunch of poblanos, it was mixed in. <laughs> so it ended up here, and now we have a cow horn pepper. This is the first time I've ever seen a cow horn pepper. So pretty awesome. I don't know exactly how big these get. Now we'll see. Oh, and look at this. Um, okra is doing really nice never grown okra before but you know compost and and um, also castings tea you can see what happens <clears throat> this is how I usually plant my rabbit feed you know Georgia collards they they do behave like kale when they're growing you know and so I'll just take out like I'll come over here and if there's anything you know bad or with a hole in it or some, you know. I'll just give that to my rabbits. And then we get to eat the good ones. So, all right. These are still good. Rabbits don't care. These shallots are interesting. And the beans. It looks like we have flowers already on the cucumbers. No sign of tendrils yet. Oh, there's one. How about that? So essentially this is just going to connect on to here. These tendrils will get super long and I'll just kind of push it through here and then it will grow up and overtake this fence here. That's why we have these holes holding up straight. So, well guys, there's a quick garden update. Until next time, happy spring and get planting now, you know, get some food in the ground so... Uh, You'll have a great harvest by the end of this season. All right. Toby again from wormcastings.net. Talk to you later. Bye.